Um, can you describe uh, for us perhaps what methods are used to recruit children? Is it forcefully or is it at times voluntarily? Well, uh, any recruitment of uh, children uh, in, in, into a military force uh, under the age of 18 is, is, is regarded as coerced um, mm -hmm. unless it happens at the age of 16 and there is an obligation on the part of the force not to deploy the child. So any deployment of children under the age of 18 would be coercive. Um, in the Myanmar military, we have noticed um, quite often uh, civilian brokers have been used to pick up children um, and to present them mm -hmm. to battalion commanders who in turn then um, either receive falsified documentation on age mm -hmm. and recruit the children. Uh, in other instances, we've had examples where uh, military officials themselves have gone out to public spaces, uh, including railway stations, bus stops, to identify really? uh, separated, unaccompanied children, more specifically children who've um, come from villages looking for jobs in the city. Right. And um, uh, various methods are used. At times, they're coerced into joining. They're given two options to either produce their national registration card or jo or go to prison. Obviously, hmm. uh, the, the children who do not have a national registration card um, agree to go with the, the military official, and, and that's when recruitment takes place. What would, the, the, what would a daily life be like in, uh, for a child who finds himself in a conflict zone? Would they be bullied? Would they be forced to do jobs that other soldiers wouldn't do? Again, you know, the, the level of information about uh, children um, who, who serve in various roles in the Myanmar military continues to be scarce. Right. Um, the, the one important issue, we shouldn't forget that most of these children suffer from high levels of trauma. Yes. So yes. their narratives often um, are not very, um, you know, for instance, the narratives may change. So mm -hmm. it, it is not very reliable information. But we know for a fact that children are trained along with the other soldiers um, for four and a half months um, in, in uh, training centers, they are then expected to perform all the duties of an adult soldier. Mm -hmm. um, often children, depending on their capabilities, may be used as porters, messengers, spies, cooks, um, as, mm -hmm. as, uh, to perform certain labor, yes. but they are trained in uh, military equipment and to in, in firearms and therefore are um, often deployed in, yes. in active combat. Well, you, you mentioned the steps that have been taken. Um, are you satisfied that the Burmese government is doing enough uh, to verify uh, its end of the bargain in this case? Um, as I said before, you know, certain steps that have been taken by the Myanmar government, particularly the signing of the action plan, the recent releases, the increased access the UN is getting, uh, the I increased receptiveness of the Myanmar government to listen to this issue mm -hmm. are all very, very, very positive signs, mm -hmm. certainly. But our fear is that not enough is being done in terms of the prevention agenda. So, for instance... Prevention of recruitment. Pre prevention of recruitment right. in the future. Mm -hmm. It is not sufficient just to release, identify and release children who are currently present. Yes. It is important to initiate steps that actually prevent the future recruitment of children and these would requ require um, a, a major transformation and reform of the Myanmar military. Mm -hmm. So steps in terms of reduction in troop size um, in, in a, a a modernization of recruitment procedures and processes, mm -hmm. oversight and monitoring of these processes, and most of all, accountability to ensure that the enough deterrents are created so that people are too fearful to recruit. Right, well, you're, you're talking about a, a downsize in troop numbers there. So to, to what extent do you think uh, the pr prevention of uh, child recruitment uh, it lies hand in hand with the ceasefire agreements uh, around the country with the, the various ethnic armies. 
Most certainly, you know, uh, it has been proved the world over in various conflicts that child soldiers and child protection issues need to be embedded at the start of a peace talk and a peace mm -hmm. process yes. rather than be linked up to the issue of demobilization at a later stage. This is important because for two reasons. Firstly, children need immediate protection. And as we have seen from tr uh, conflicts across the world and or indeed in, in Myanmar, um, the level of trauma of children who've been living for decades in situations of armed conflict, mm -hmm. whether it's the ethnic areas or within the Myanmar military, the situation of trauma is very high. Right. These children need instant help. Their situation should not be left uh, mortgaged to the issue of peacefire and peace agreements in the long run.